the mostly textured part of Mr. Sado's haircut. Um, what I wanted to do, like I said earlier, was leaving a bit of length here so he's got a bit of a point in the back and we're going to be going through the top of this and really texturing out a lot with the feather razor. Why are we using a feather razor? Well, the reason is because the feather razor has teeth in it. It's not going to take off all of the hair at once. If I was going to go through this area with a regular straight edge razor, it comes right off. Right off is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking to add a lot of texture to accentuate and enhance the movement throughout his hair. Before I go in with the razor, what I'm going to be using is a lot of the blade glide. Um, most people would use water, but I prefer the blade glide because it has a lot of conditioning properties and it really helps the razor glide through the hair. Obviously that's why it's called blade glide. Um, but I tend to find that it plumps the cuticle a little bit. It makes the hair very into being cut with a razor and you're not getting any snagging, pulling or anything like that. It's very comfortable for you to cut with. It's also very comfortable for the client to get their hair cut with a razor. So right now we're going to be applying a lot of the Blade Glide to his hair and then we'll start razoring. The other thing that's fabulous about Blade Glide, at least for me anyway, is the smell. I love the smell of this stuff. Smell sell. If clients love the smell and you love the smell, it's easy. Okay, now that we've completely saturated his hair with the Blade Glide, making sure that we're running our fingers through it, everything feels consistently moisturized. We're going to move on to the back area, start in the occipital area, taking out a lot of this hair for texture. After that, we're going to be moving forward, over directing the front back to maintain some length at the front, and then we're going to be going through and detailing the front, and that will complete the top section of being razored. After that, we're going to move on to detailing the sideburn areas and also the nape with the nape razor. As we're moving through this area around the occipital, there's two things I'm going to be focusing on. The first is that I want to get a lot of texture through here. Like I said earlier, that's why I'm going to be using a feather razor with a textured blade to give me more texture. The other thing that I need to be concerned about is that we're dealing with very strong growth. Everybody has a crown, there's growth patterns all the way throughout the hair. So the thing that we need to focus on is not to cut the hair too short. Again, this is something we need to focus on when we're dealing with different ethnicities of hair and particularly wavy hair. If we cut the hair too short, we're going to create a lot of volume right at the root area and it's going to throw the other hair out of whack and it's not going to have a nice consistent finish. So generally as a rule of thumb, as I comb through the hair, I'm thinking about not starting above halfway. Halfway down is where I'm going to be putting my texture in. If I look at the whole hair shaft, don't go more than halfway up before you start your texturizing. Like I said, if you do this, this will create too much volume at the root area and it will make a lot of short hair stick up and it will really push this longer hair up. Again, not what we're looking for, so we have to be very careful of that fact. So, we're going to be going through and resectioning out this area, holding the hair that I need to cut with the razor, using somewhat of a point technique with the feather razor now. Again, as you go in, we're talking about blade angle being very important. If we go straight in through the hair, we're not going to be cutting much hair. As we increase the blade angle slightly to the side, either side is okay, it doesn't matter, whichever is more comfortable to you. That's the amount of hair we get off. The more we increase the angle to the side, we're going to be cutting a lot more hair. So my rule of thumb personally is I start off with very dainty angles and slowly increase until I get the desired look. If I was to go in the opposite way, I would have the risk of running too much hair out of there, cutting too much off and then be in a position where I'm trying to fix it. That's not the way I like to work. It's better to go very baby steps and end up in the happy result rather than in the situation where you're trying to correct something. Okay, so we're just going to go in slightly, increase the blade angle as we texture through the hair, deciding how much I want to take off. Again, this is a very small area, so we're just dealing with minute little hairs coming off because we're creating a lot of texture in the hair. After I've cut some, I'm going to move it around to see if I'm getting the texture that I'm looking for. I think there's some here, but I think I need to go in again, just in this area, and we'll take some more of that out. 
Again, not going too deep into the hair shaft because we don't want to create too much volume at the root. Mr. Sato obviously has Asian hair, which is very strong, strong textured hair, strong growth patterns. So I don't want to accentuate anything that looks amiss. I just want the look to be consistent with what we planned out in the beginning with our foundation. As we're working through the occipital area, we're going to be working up, taking big sections of hair. I'm not working on very fine sections because I don't want to detail too much in fine sections, again, creating too much volume. So as we go through, slightly angling our blade to texture out the hair that we need to remove until we get the look that we are going for. We want to make sure we have texture, but without too much hair removal. You can see there's putting nice texture in there. We're getting a lot of movement and we're not seeing any holes in the haircut, which is exactly what we're looking for. A little bit more on this side. Again, like I said earlier, the angle of the blade with which you go in is going to determine the amount of hair that you take off. So to me, like I said, better baby steps, better do more to get the desired result than just go in too quick with like reckless abandon and finding yourself in a situation you didn't want to be in. Now slightly above that section, this is going to be our last section of the occipital area. Again, combing that hair down, going in with our blade, creating the texture through that section, and only working on the very ends of the hair. Start off straight, slowly increase your angle as you work through it. Okay, I think that's looking good for the occipital section. Now we will move on to the top and the front.